Well, hello, scrappers. Mike here. Welcome back to my channel. And I'm going to admit it right up front. Okay. The thumbnail is clickbait because this is not 80 kilos of pins. But let me explain what's going on here. This is a representative sample uh, from somebody who has 80 kilos of pins. So, just like this. So, here's the back story. Um, a fellow who watches my channel named Johnny lives in Finland. And he vacations in the U.S. every year. And he contacted by, me by email and said, Hey, Mike, I'm coming to the U.S.A. shortly. Can I visit you? I'll be in Florida. And I'm like, okay, I guess. Where are you going? He said, Jacksonville. I said, well, you know, Jacksonville is like four and a half hours away. He said, I don't care. I'll drive down there. I'm like, okay. So, uh... Johnny shows up the other day in a convertible, a uh, rental convertible, and just as he gets here, we're starting to talk, the sky opens up and it starts pouring down rain and he has to run out and put, and put the top up on his convertible. But then we have a nice long discussion and um, he tells me he's got 80 kilos of pins just like this that he needs somebody to process for him because where he lives, he can't, he can't do the processing, he can't do the refining, but... He could scrap out stuff, and he's been scrapping out, I mean, literal many tons of Ericsson and uh, Nokia old telephone equipment and getting pins out of back planes. And uh, up, to, up to the point where he's got like 80 kilos of them accumulated, he showed me pictures of bins full of them. And he's like, yeah, I need, I need to process these. Would, would you be interested? Uh, first off, he wants to know what the yield is on a representative sample. So we've got a little sample here he brought in his luggage with him from Finland. Um, not a huge amount, but uh, he says it's a representative sample. And I, uh, I put a magnet to him, and I don't know, maybe a third of them are steel, and the rest are probably, I would guess, phosphor bronze. I would guess. And uh, they look like they've got some pretty good bulb plating on them. I mean, they're not uh, they're not military grade, but they're not consumer grade either. I mean, these are these are from big, you know, telephone exchange switches and stuff. So they're pretty good quality. So I imagine there's a pretty good uh, amount of gold there, one to one and a half percent by weight, I would imagine, of gold. So you know, there's a fair amount of gold there. So he asked me if I would process this representative sample and let him know what kind of a realistic yield he could expect on his 80 kilos. And maybe, just maybe, in the future, he'll find a way to get those 80 kilos to me and I will process them for him. So that's a possibility. That might be down the road. Subscribe to see future videos like that. It might just happen. Um, so yeah, so we had a nice long discussion. He showed me lots of pictures and he told me about some of the other stuff that he's been collecting. Um, and he brought me just a few little representative samples, not too much. I mean, he did come halfway around the world and luggage. So he's got some MLCCs here. Now, unfortunately, we, we had a discussion about these. Unfortunately, these are magnetic. And the conventional wisdom is that uh, magnetic MLCCs don't have any value to them. So we discussed that. But he said he'd still like to know for sure because he's been collecting a lot of them and should he stop collecting them. Um, so what I'm going to do is, there's, there's not very many here. So what I'm going to do in a future video is I'll combine a bunch of my magnetic MLCCs with his, we'll process them, and we'll see once and for all. You know, if the conventional wisdom's right, if there's no, you know, precious metals in here, or if there is, how much, what kind of yield can we get out of it? So that's another video in the future. And then he brought just a few little um, oscillators. Uh, these are plastic ones. Um... He collects the metal ones, too, but these are plastic ones, and he was interested to know if there's any value in these. And, well, I've got a bunch of these, too, so I can combine some of mine with his, process them, and find out just, you know, what kind of value they have. I imagine there is some gold and probably some silver in these. Um, 
I don't know how much because I've never done it. So I guess we'll all find out together when I get around to processing them. And then you can see some little gold things down in here. Hopefully you can see them. Some little gold specks. Um, he's been pulling apart a lot of relays. Uh, he got so many relays. These are little relays. You can see in the hand how small they are. Um, Johnny is the first to admit that he's got some OCD issues, and he likes to just sit down and tear stuff apart until he's got every little bit and piece off of it. Um, he's, he's processed thousands and thousands of these relays here, and he's gotten kilos and kilos of fine copper wire out of them to take to the scrapyard. That's pretty OCD. Yeah, um, okay. But he's also got little gold contacts. I don't know if there's enough there for me to really figure out much about him, but he's collecting them. He wanted to know. Some of them look like silver. Some of them are clearly gold, gold-plated anyway. Um, I'll see what I can do with them, but th with such a small sample, it's going to be hard to uh, figure out much about him. But, uh, yeah, he brought them. Oh, and here's one of his MLCCs has escaped. Get that back in there. With such a small sample size, everyone counts. And then he brought, um, I forget what this was. He said this was, oh, part of a pager, I guess. A pager. I guess he gets a bunch of these. And we talked about the different components on it. Um, it's like we got some green tantal and capacitors over here and over here. Um, some disc capacitors. I'm not sure about these red ones. They might be dipped mylar capacitors. A lot of transistors. The transistors probably have them few whiskers of gold in them but boy there's a lot of a lot of base metal there and uh you know circuit board all covered in tin uh copper traces under the tin he was talking about whether it's worthwhile to try and salvage the copper from circuit boards that's a tough thing to do johnny that's a tough thing to do especially you know if you don't have a lot of space to uh to process stuff but uh you know, there is copper there underneath that tin. And the tin itself is valuable, too. So, yeah, so we had a nice long discussion. Uh, we talked about all kinds of stuff, where he gets his equipment from, what he straps out, what he saves. Um, we talked about travel. He's been all over the world. I've been all over the world. He was very interested in my uh, trip to Antarctica, which I'll put a link to in the upper right. He... Uh, he watches my videos, so he's seen that. And I was interested in some of the places he's been, so we, we chatted about that. Had a nice little discussion while the rain poured down for about an hour, hour and a half before um, we had to call it quits. So thank you, Johnny, for bringing me all this stuff. I really appreciate it. And I will get on it when I can, uh, processing your representative samples here. Uh, now, one thing I would like from my audience out there is some suggestions. Um, with such a small sample here, I think I can just dissolve these in acid. I mean, there may be some metastatic acid issues. I could use a P solution, but that's going to take a very long time. Um, acid would be quicker, but there might be metastatic acid issues um, with that, uh, which might hurt the yield a little bit. But... I'm thinking ahead to the 80 kilos in case I have to do those. I can think of two possible methods that make more sense than dissolving all the metal in acid. Uh, one would be Eco Goldex to strip the gold plating off. You know, I just put out a video trash in Eco Goldex, but here's an application where it might actually come in handy. So that's a possibility. Um, another possibility, I suppose, would be reverse electroplating which I have not tried yet. So, guys, give me, your, uh, give me your opinions about how you would go if you suddenly got 80 kilos of pins like this dumped on you. How would you go about recovering the gold off of them? I would really like to hear your opinion on that because uh, I may need some guidance on that in the future. And uh, there's a lot of wisdom out there in my audience, so feel free to comment. Let me know what you think. Anyway, thanks again, Johnny, for uh, bringing this stuff to me. I will get to work on your little representative samples here as soon as I can. My lab right now is flooded. I had to wait out here with my waders on. And uh, there's just more rain coming. So the electrics are all wet. So this is <laughs> things are a little slow this time of year around the lab. There's not much I can do until the rainy season lets up a little bit. 
But, uh, yeah, I'll get on it as soon as I can. And, uh, like I said, thanks a lot for bringing it. Thanks a lot for thinking of me. And looking forward to meeting you again, Johnny. It was, it was a lot of fun to meet you. And uh, if you folks out there found this video at all interesting, educational, informative, inspirational, whatever, give it a like, give it a thumbs up. Remember to leave a comment. Tell me how you would process this stuff. And subscribe to see future videos where I might be processing his 80 kilos of pins. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching this one. Bye.